Nicolay Bay's transit service has been inadequate since it opened. Most of the routes are coverage routes that reach everyone but do so very slowly. There are also significant overcrowding issues on all but one of the routes. And because the service is run by the county, it does not have the budget to improve things. It cannot levy funds directly for transit, so transit fights with all other budget requests during budget season. And this means that it routinely loses out to other services, such as police and fire. To remedy this, the county issues a referendum asking residents if they would like to form a transit district. The district would be able to levy a half percent sales tax on all communities that participate in the district. The communities narrowly vote in favor of the district, and Nicolay Bay Transit, or NBT, is formed. NBT's new general manager, Carl Jackson, has pressed for restructuring the transit network with a focus on proper transit hierarchy. In today's episode, we'll restructure the transit network using a logical hierarchy. We'll also build a second bus garage in Couillard Shores so that there's not quite so much deadheading time when buses need to get here. And we'll also build a small transfer facility right about here. And at the end, we'll name the park that we built in the last episode based on your recommendations. And if you think we're going to use minibuses in today's episode, hit the like button. And if you wish that we wouldn't, hit the like button for that too, because we're going to do it anyway. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building Nicolay Bay, and I am excited for today's episode because we are going to be able to use some of the new buses that we just got in the new base game update. We're going to be completely focused on transit today, looking at the transit hierarchy in our community and making sure that it makes sense. And what that's going to really involve is a deep dive into our existing routes and a complete rethinking of the way that we're going about this. So before we can dive into our new routes, we need to see where we've been and see what's wrong with our existing routes. So let's take a look at these. And we'll start with number one, our Couillard Shores Local. So when we zoom out and take a look at this route, what we can see is that this is a route that originates here at our transfer set facility, goes over to our harbor, from our harbor, loops around this roundabout and goes over to the high school and then does a loop around Couillard Shores. So it's always a busy route. There's a lot of stuff happening. In fact, I think on this route, if we take a look, we had to increase the number of buses that we were using to go up to 175% capacity. And that is simply because we're trying to do a lot with this route. We have some passing up every now and then, and our buses are either really full or completely empty. So we probably have a little bit too much capacity on here. The other thing about this route is that the idea behind it was to not have deadheading. Deadheading being a bus traveling to its route or from its route without actually having stops. Just a bus driver going to the garage or a bus driver going to their next stop without the doors opening up for revenue service. So this completely eliminates that, but it also could send people in the wrong direction to get to where they want to go. And they could be trapped on the bus for a long time. So that's not an ideal route. We're going to have to change that one up. Secondly, we've got this Couillard Shores Town of Evergreen line. The funny thing is, I don't think this goes to Couillard Shores anymore. This one just immediately beelines over to the Town of Evergreen. So uh, the city of Evergreen now, it was the Town of Evergreen. So this does a loop around the city. So it's not bi-directional in any, any way. It just kind of goes through the community, goes up past our couplet because this road used to connect through and now it goes around and then gets trapped in this cul-de-sac <laughs> because that used to also connect. Loops around the cul-de-sac, goes up to our town again and then comes back through. Now there's a funny thing about this service. So we've got a bus road and we can see this bus right here. It's not going to continue down the bus road. It's going to take a right and go down this residential street. That is <laughs> not a good solution. That's a, an investment that we would expect the buses to use. So we're going to need to do something about that. But the more troubling thing about this route, we can actually see right here. <laughs> I love when I see this in City Skylines. This is the most unrealistic part of the game, but it also brings me a great deal of joy. When I see this, it's it's funny to me because <laughs> between this stop right here, we've got 255, 56 people here, another 260 over here. So over 500 people between these two stops, which are two blocks away. That's hilarious. We're going to need to do something about that. And then our final route is this red route. It's the town of Couillard route, and this route was supposed to emulate a shared ride taxi. So I really wanted this to be minibuses. I don't believe that we went with them, though. Nope, we have a normal bus. 
because we're doing so much that it's attracting enough people to crowd out a minibus. But it's doing a poor job because if we take a look, let's, let's see, we got 25 vehicles on this rural route. So not only do we have just a ridiculous number of stops, but we also have a ridiculous number of vehicles and no passengers relative to the other ones. And remember, remember the most expensive part of a bus route is the driver. So we would absolutely not want to have 25 vehicles out there. So this is the route that comes up here and it stops at a couple of different employment locations, it stops here at the mills, goes through the town of Couillard Shores, but doesn't actually stop there, then goes up through our forestry industry and swings by all of these rural homes. So trying to provide coverage like it is a shared ride taxi before going back to the inner city bus facility with a stop at the garbage facility up here. So providing lots of access to employment. And if we take a look at this route, you know, the ridership is low and what we see are a lot of empty vehicles. It should, it should never have a bus route in this game. In reality, you might provide a bus that you know isn't going to have strong ridership, but it will show people that the bus is always available, give them confidence that it's going to exist. The Sims in this game don't need confidence that the, that, that the bus is going to exist, that it's going to be there for them. Yeah, they're willing to wait for days. <laughs> so why would we why would we get crazy about it? You know, but that is a consideration in real life, particularly for transit dependent riders. You want to demonstrate that a bus will always be there. If it's hourly, even if that hourly midday service isn't great, seeing it there gives people confidence that they can uh they can depend on it and they can make their life choices around it. So that's not a thing here, but what is a thing is deleting all these routes and starting over. So the very first thing I want to do, rather than just having all of these routes that are just doing all of these things, let's think about routes that do one thing particularly well. So the very first route I want to have is just a route that pings back and forth to our passenger harbor. So if you wanted to get from the harbor to one of the cities, you would be forced to transfer here, but it would be very predictable. So we're just going to swing this one around and there we go. Very simple. It does, it's very purpose-built and it makes sense. We're going to call this one the Harbor Shuttle and we are going to use a minibus. We're going to see how that works for us. And I'm very curious about the number of vehicles it will attempt to throw at this one. Just one. Just one. Holy cow. A reasonable number of vehicles. All right. So we're on a roll. Next one I want to do is going to be a service to Couillard Shore. But I feel like we need to do something a little bit more. So one thing that would have been a concern in this area is the deadhead. So if you have a route that serves Couillard Shores, you'd have to drive all the way from over here, an empty bus all the way across town just to start your route over here. So now that we have an RTA, they are going to have the ability to bond for capital expenditures. So bonding being taking out loans for capital expenditures, that being buildings, buses, things of that nature, anything that's not operational, not you can't take out a loan to pay for a bus driver's salary. So that said, we've got some land and it's going to be right here, right across from this area because this area. So we've got here's here's where I see the opportunity. So we've got this little bit of a mound right here. We're going to take the mound down and add in a bus turnaround facility right here. So this will be where the bus that goes to the inner city facility comes to drop off any passengers that would transfer onto the local service going around here. So that what's going back and forth is kind of that art is kind of that collector connection, the arterial connection being the inner city bus that's coming and then our local connection starting right here. So there's a hierarchy to our bus service and a logic and a purpose. So we're going to level this out and then we'll, we'll just pretend that we moved the dirt over here. Now this house here, <laughs> is likely very unhappy. The only other location I could see it going would be potentially right here. Especially, there is an apartment right there. Ah, uh, actually, as much as I hate to do this, there's an apartment over here. And this is the side of this facility. So it's not like we're blocking views. Uh, we're going to let these people win out in the battle that they would have likely had at the city council level, trying to block this. There'll be an empathetic alder that says, all right, I get it. If I lived right there, I wouldn't want this bus facility there either. So we'll place that right here. We'll level this out. 
So here's the thing about this facility. In the game, it's very specific, but I've seen bus barns or garages or just a secondary storage facility that is as simple as an old warehouse, just a place where you could store a couple of buses with some electricity so that if it's a cold day, you could plug the bus's engine into a block. You wanna be able to do that so that uh, you, you, know, you can begin a route in a more favorable location. And the other thing is you never know where the bus drivers themselves are coming from. And maybe they're picking a route that is closer to this garage. And as a result, rather than driving all the way down to the bus facility over in the town of Evergreen, the city of Evergreen, <laughs> I'm going to have to keep catching myself today. They're able to live in Couillard Shores and drive right here to this facility. So this is much fancier than I would imagine it being, but we're going to live with it. I, I, I wish I had a smaller asset, but we'll go with this one. It'll be just fine. All right, now we need a turnaround facility here, and we're gonna try something with our new bus roads. So we've got all these different options now. We've got, of course, we've got our different pedestrian roads, and I think that's probably our most logical place to start. We could try to force zoning on our expressways and stuff like that, but that, that's, that's, that's kind of a whole ball of wax that I don't wanna get involved in. So what we're going to do is come through here, and this is going to be a really simple facility. It doesn't have to be fancy. Okay, that was way more work than it had to be. Basically what I was doing is I just want a little turnaround here. So a bus could queue up here, a bus could queue up here. Uh, ideally, this would be one ways. Uh, we're not living in an ideal world. So <laughs> we're going to be okay with this and we're gonna just select these and move it control H down here to get these at the same level so the buses don't have to climb up to get here and truthfully there's kind of a, a bit of elevation it's fine I'm gonna I'm not gonna get crazy I'm gonna try my best not to get crazy and we'll pull this back just a little bit as far as we can go to give ourselves some space here so we can potentially queue a bit more a little bit of imperfection here, and I'm going to be a little bit forgiving right now. We're going to try some things, and we'll fix it up at the end if we have to. So I want a nice fence along here and uh, some landscaping as well. Now, there's a reason for this. I think that these homes across from here would be absolutely furious. And the reason is if you figure there's a bus that comes up, and their lights are going to shine directly into this house. Same thing with this one as it loops around. Lights from a bus right there. Lights from a bus right there, lights from a bus right there. You, you get the picture. And it's just slightly higher. <laughs> so like, in general, not a great situation. So we've got some, I think we've got a unique solution for this. It's gonna be fun. So we're gonna place this along here. Yeah, that's very lumpy and bumpy and, and not, not very aesthetic. So we're gonna try something else. We're gonna lower this down to be at this level here. And that seems to do a great deal. Then we'll pull our fence out just a bit. And then the real bit of handiwork is going to come inside of intersection marking tool. So what I wanna do, I, I, I wanna resize some trees to make them appear to be a different kind of tree than I have. So rather than doing a line, we're gonna do a tree. And I really want some arborvitas. That to me is what would make the most sense along here if you were gonna completely shade this out. But we don't have arborvitas, but we do have a boreal pine. So what we can do here is we'll select that inside of our intersection marking tool. And then we'll take the scale down. And then I will get these super close together like an arborvita. And now you can kind of see where I'm going. You can see where I'm going. Let's set the offset. We'll shift this back this way there we go and you know I, I think that that height is just about what they'd want so we're gonna go with it so I'm gonna copy this and just paste it along there we go there we go so you're not gonna be able to see this at all now we're gonna need to modify this a bit not a big deal and I'm going to control H this road down just a little bit it'll help us we'll figure out the, the bit of imperfection over here in just a moment so now I feel like we're we're actually blocking some of the light coming out of here. So now the next thing I want to do, we don't want to stop there. This is pretty ugly. And if you were walking along the sidewalk, this this truthfully, I don't know how comfortable this is. 
let's decorate down here and I think that we could have some nice bushes to make this look a little bit nicer. Oh, that looks so much better. Now, there is one thing that I didn't mention at the start of the episode that I kind of want to point out right now. You might be noticing that my shadowing issue is gone. It took a lot of work. <laughs> Truthfully, it took a lot of work. Uh, I downloaded a variety of mods, including Relight, to make this work. I'm going to be updating the mod list, hopefully this weekend, uh, with some instructions and my Relight settings. I'll post those on the Nicolay Bay theme, which I will also have to update. Uh, so I will provide an updated version of that, and you'll be able to take a look. And what you'll see is that it just generally things look a lot better. When we get down to the town of Evergreen, you're really going to see it because some of those, uh, the rainbow buildings that we put in just look a lot better now. Anyway, now you can see what we have here. There's a facility that makes some sense. And I think that uh, it, it would uh, be a, a high quality facility and kind of what you would expect the, the maximum <laughs> you'd expect to see in a place like this. I think that will provide a bit of shade as well. Okay, and then last, I'm gonna add a jacaranda in here. I know these are a tropical tree, but they look a lot like, you know, a plum tree that you might see in this kind of climate. So I'm good with it. I think it looks nice. And I like a little bit of variety. So we're gonna do that. It's not like I'm putting in this this palm tree right here. So we're gonna we're gonna live with a bit of imperfection in that in that particular way. There we go. I'm feeling good about that. This is not a fancy facility and it shouldn't be, but it is going to be one that's very functional. I also want to take this. I'm concerned about, yeah, we got some grade concerns. So we're going to send this path back up here and then we'll connect it up with this path over here. Very good. Very good. And let's see if we can tamp down some of this terrain madness at all. There we go. My only concern. Uh, you know, from a realism standpoint, if we were building this, is that in the center here, we actually might need to have a detention pond because now this is the low point in this area. So all the water from up here would pond right here and then we have fences keeping it in place. If it got here, it might run off here and kind of build up in this intersection. Lots of bad stuff, but this is a game and we can live with a bit of imperfection. The other thing is we do have a lot of terrain right here. So along here, I'm going to add in just a few rocks. All right, all of that work and we have no buses coming to the community, but we have the opportunity to bring them into this high quality facility now. So let's get that bus route going. So I'm going to start the route. We'll just have a stop right here. And then it's just going to meet up right here and swing right back around. Now, I have a feeling right off the bat that this is gonna be an absolutely crazy busy route. We're gonna give it some time and we'll build some of our local routes instead. So this is our transfer facility. Our route will start right here. And we're just gonna to try to hit every destination here. So we'll come up, we'll stop at the fish market, go down Main Street, and we'll have fairly close stop spacing every couple of blocks to provide excellent access here. We will go to the high school up here. So we'll stop right up front and then we'll come back down and then meet our loop. And we're going in a different direction. Now, the one thing I am curious about, I don't know if I've left crossings through here. So we'll go into node controller, control N, click on this and add in a crossing. And now someone could reasonably get back and forth across the street. Otherwise, I'm not sure that you could actually cross here. We'll do the same thing over here. Don't want to forget about that. Look at all these buses just coming. People are now streaming in. Looking good. Looking good. Okay, and first up, we have our Couillard Shores Local. I don't think that that's the right name. If we take a look, this is the stop one that has two stops. So we've got one right here, and our second stop is over here. So this is going to be Couillard Shores Intercity. So that's all that this does, and we don't need... 11 vehicles doing this in fact we're going to take it down to one and we're going to switch our vehicle and take a look at what we have now so these new buses first of all they look awesome 
So they're <laughs> just absolutely stunning. If we take a look, let's just take a look at this one. So this one is 22 capacity. Looks very, very nice though. Really, really dig these new buses. We have a 30, a 25, a 22, a double decker, 60, 65, an articulated bus at 50, 70, and 80. So very good. The one thing that's interesting about this is that we don't see what our capacity is in our other buses. So like these are our airport buses. No idea what the capacity is there. Our Bendy, our double decker, our mini bus have no clue unless we actually put them out there. Same thing with our old bus, which I think is kind of a weird omission. And then the other thing that's also very weird is now our biofuel buses are basically worthless. <laughs> so we're going to send an articulated bus on this. I think one articulated bus going back and forth, just one driver and one high capacity vehicle pinging back and forth, acting as this collector bridge between these two uh, communities is going to be really, really impactful. So I think we're good on this particular route. I don't want to think about this until the end. We'll take a as look. As long as neither of these has more than 80 passengers at, at the stop, you're probably okay. And if there is more than 80, we'll just slightly increase the number of vehicles. All right, so let's take a look at our next route, which is our local route and see what happened there. So this is the number three Cuillard Shores local. We are gonna rename the Harbor Shuttle, but we'll name it number one. So if we come here, I just wanna see, if you add up all of your passengers, is it equal with the number of, uh, the, the capacity of all the buses that we have? And right now, from what I can tell, it looks like it should be pretty close. So I'm not overly concerned about this one. I think we need to let it run for a little while to see what actually happens. And if we start seeing lots of bunching or backing up or any stops that have, like this one right here is 23, but it has a bus right behind it that's basically empty. This could probably have less capacity, which is kind of interesting now that we have uh, this local service providing local service needs. So I'm going to speed this up for just a moment and see what happens. Okay, and I let it go for a little while. And there's a lot of people coming down this path to get to our new bus facility. And here's the interesting thing. If we take a look here, it looks like we're mostly keeping up on this route. It's doing so well that I might just leave it alone for now. Even if we have a little bit of excess capacity, probably better than not enough. Our blue route though, if we take a look here, check this out. We've got a whole bunch of people queuing here. Now I'm curious, I have no idea how many people are there right now, but I'm gonna guess more than 80. So let's take a look at this one. Yep, we've got 137 right here, 126 right here. I'm gonna increase the capacity. We're gonna go to at least two buses. So these 80, and truthfully, we're gonna go to three. We'll have a little bit of excess capacity, a little bit of slack to, uh, to, to get this taken care of, to get these cleared and to not have all this bunching. If you were on this, this is a long route to get passed up would be absolutely catastrophic. You would uh, get passed up one time and go, I'm done. I'm never taking the bus again. This is one of the worst experiences I've ever had in transportation. So that's not something you ever want to do. With these three buses, it looks like we're going to clear this. And rather than having a completely full bus, it will have just a little bit of extra capacity. And that's okay. We'll have to wait to see how that all turns out. Next up, I want to focus on our mini bus route. This is the one I am really excited about. So this is going to be our circulator that goes through all of these rural areas with a mini bus. <laughs> so I don't care that it's not one of the new ones. I've loved this mini bus ever since I saw it. Now I know that this is not the intention for it. In fact, I think that the mini buses come from Egypt uh, or that maybe that they're inspired by Egypt. I think that they're pretty common. I read an article uh, talking about the problem with mini buses in Cairo. <laughs> so it, it, it's kind of a, the Wild West of, of uh, transit there. That said, we are going to absolutely make best use of this in town. So we'll swing by. We want to hit up all of our employment destinations. We may have to have more routes than we want, but I, I would think that these mini buses, these are vans, they'd be able to traverse these roads a lot better than a actual bus would be able to. So. And there we go. Now I'm very curious, this new route bus line four, we're going to call this 
Number four, Town of Couillard. We'll change the color because they decided to give us something very similar, and I've made it similar too because apparently I have no creativity right now. We'll make it green, and they are going to throw four vehicles at this. That's very modest. And we will switch them to be mini. Oh, no, no, sorry. Four so far, 14 total. So we're saying mini buses, and this is a prime example of why we needed this bus garage right here. So we're gonna send all the mini buses out here, and they're not, rather than deadheading all the way around, they begin their route right here. So the deadhead is a block and a half. 14 vehicles, each of these carries 20. And if we look at these stops, we're seeing one, two, three, six, five, very low numbers. We are gonna take our number of vehicles and get it down to like five. We don't need that many. I would rather start low and as we have problems increase rather than start high and have people reject the service because they see empty vehicles all the time. That's always a concern too. You, you know, it's that balance, the balancing act. You want to have capacity or uh, do you want it to not tick off people? <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's, there's that, there's that balance there. It's the game and it's not that expensive, but we're still going to try to keep it reasonable and not overbuild this capacity. This to me seems really nice. And let's take a look at the minibus. I just love these. It feels like what you would expect to see here. Just a little tiny bus in this very nice little facility. And look at all these folks coming in, getting off the bus, that big platoon of people. I love it. I love it so much. That is great. Now, before we leave here, I do want to take a look. We've added a number of routes through here. Let's take a look back at our inner city route. And we are again not in a great place. I'm going to speed this up for just a moment and see if this improves. We are good at this at the stop here. It's this this one by the inner city facility that's struggling. OK, so I've been mesmerized watching this. And what I'm seeing is that we're almost clearing it, but we're not quite there. So if we added one more bus to this, it would absolutely clear this route every single time. You wouldn't have any waiting. If you add up the number of passengers, the average number of passengers at each of the stops, and then you divide that by the number of buses, you're always seeing it clear. So reasonably, it's probably OK. We could let this be and it would always function just fine but we are passing people up routinely. So I am going to increase that. If we had to increase it beyond this, I would become concerned that we're going to clog the streets up with traffic because we're throwing a million buses out there. But that's not really a concern on this because it's two stops pinging back and forth on the opposite ends of town. So we're going to just roll with it. and It's going to be just fine. And then I want to take one more look at our local route over here and see if we're having capacity issues. And it looks like this stop right here, which is right in front of our fish market has some concerns so this is very similar to our last issue so i think it's going to be bunching sometimes and there's going to be pass ups sometimes but you can see there's a bus coming right here that's completely empty so as much as i would love to never see this crowding here truthfully i think we probably have too much capacity on this route so we're going to live with just a bit of uh, a, a, a few pass ups at this one particular stop. These are, oh my goodness. I wanted mini buses here, but they're not going to work. So I see that we have 180 here, three vehicles. So if we wanted to really clear this, we could do a double decker. Maybe we'll do a double decker because this is kind of a, a tourism oriented service and we'll even get cheeky with it and go red 200. But once we get those out here, we should be fine. We'll clear it eventually. And if we don't, throwing one more would get us above where we're at. This is a really short route, pinging back and forth. Reasonably, people could walk this if they really wanted to. Now, our biggest challenge, and that is Couillard Shores. This is where we know we're going to have our capacity concerns. And we're also going to be coming from this location here, coming all the way into our community. So I don't want to double dip with what we're doing. So we're going to have a bus that serves some of the employment uses over here and goes into our inner city facility. And then one that serves the local residential over here. Maybe you have two routes that are doing that. Although I've heard rumors that Nicolay Bay Transit is has been poking around the town of Evergreen trying to get them to invest in a tram facility. It would be a really excellent investment in their community. It would not only serve transit purposes, but also economic development purposes. And that's just as valid as any other reason to invest in a service. So... We're going to start with our bus service, though, and the if we invest in the trams, it will likely come in a future episode. Why don't you let me know in the comments? 
Should we do trams? Should we have trams in downtown Evergreen? I think we should, but I'm not going to do it unless everyone else agrees. So here we're going to start out and there's some interesting stuff happening here. Looked like if at first it wanted to swing through this facility, but now it's okay. We're going to run this up here. And again, every couple of blocks, we're going to have stops. And then again, we terminate this over here. Next, we're going to send a route that goes to the downtown area. So this one, I think we are going to send right down the highway. So we'll start this one here. We'll start on an empty bay. And it's funny, I wanted to have this just after the stoplight. Generally, that's preferable because then the bus gets through the stoplight rather than stopping at the stoplight. Then the stoplight turns red and then you have, to, you have to wait again. You can make it through. It's just a little bit faster, more predictable. So we're going to send this up. We'll go every couple of blocks and this will be our downtown route. We do need a, 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 a companion route to this. And before we lose track of our naming, let's just make sure that we are good. And this is not Cuillard Shores at all. It is just evergreen. And let's look at the street for this one. Because I, I think that that's probably the best way to name it. This street is Fur Street. So we'll just name this Evergreen Fur. There we go. And then the second one is the city of Evergreen downtown downtown clockwise so because we know we have to have another route to serve this area now we'll close this off and i'm just going to mirror what we've done here and then this stop is actually in a bad location for mirroring purposes so we're going to add this and then i'm going to delete that and we will re-establish it Oh, this stinks. <laughs> We're gonna put it right there and get rid of this one. So we'll have it kind of equidistant between these two. And that'll keep our route on the street that we want it on. So feeling very good about that. I think there's a, a pretty strong justification if we had one-way bus roads to make a one-way bus road here. Unfortunately, I do not believe that we have that. Nope, they're all bi-directional. So not something available to us, but it's it's OK. We're going to be fine. Let's take a look at our routes now and see how they're looking. Well, we, first of all, we should rename Route 7. So we'll make this evergreen downtown counterclockwise. So the clockwise route, it's pretty empty, but there's a lot of need in this area. So this is a long route. Interestingly, this is 5.7 kilometers. And why this rings a bell to me is that route that was pinging back and forth between uh, the, the inner city bus facility and the transfer facility in the in, in the count, town of in Cuillard Shores was 6.1 kilometers long. So it's not that different. The big difference is we've got a ton of stops and every single stop has a full uh, need here. So I think that we're going to have to go with an articulated bus here and we're going to go straight for 80 right now and it's going to throw 10 buses. So that's 800 passenger capacity. I wish that I had a better way of adding all of these up. It's funny. I've been seeing on Reddit all of these folks showing the console version with the ability to see more route statistics. And I just I don't think we have them on PC. So it's kind of another W for the council. Uh, it's it's kind of interesting like that. I think truthfully that this should work <laughs> except for this. Oh, this is not a good look. <laughs> That's a that's a challenge. Truthfully, this makes me wonder if we should have a dedicated bus route right here. Or we control our junctions more. And you see a right hand turn coming from the bus in the left hand lane. Just bizarre behavior right here. We're going to try that. We're going to make this a dedicated bus road and see if that helps. There we go. So hopefully that helps some. And it seems like the buses aren't bunching, but they're also not using this road so that's kind of interesting so we'll just have to see how that goes okay so let's take a look at route five our first street route and we're seeing the same thing tons and tons of need so this tells me a couple of things obviously the local bus is not going to be good enough nine buses not going to be good enough 
and we could go through and add all of these passengers together. And I'm actually going to do that this time around. So we currently have 500 people queued up here uh, at our bus stops. And then you see that we've got a number of full buses. Then we have nine vehicles on this route, which to me means that if we went with an articulated bus, we're probably going to clear all of these. It's probably going to be OK. The other thing that we could do is I could take my game hat and put that on and say that my bus stops are too close together. I think that blocks uh, stops every couple of blocks is completely fine for a local service. The game doesn't like it, so I might need to thin these out by half and that could resolve all the issues. That said, we're going to let this roll with some articulated buses and see how that resolves our issues because it might just solve all of our problems. So I'm going to let this go for just a minute. And we'll see how things go. OK, and I had to be a little patient with this, but what you can see is that now that we've let the buses unbunch a bit, we are starting to see some of these areas that we had some significant concerns with completely clear out. And now we just have a couple of stops like this one has 50 people queued up. We're going to completely clear that we're good. We have the right amount of capacity. I think that you could make the case that we may have just a couple too many buses, but I'm going to live with that. The only concern that I have here with actually having too many buses out there is if we take a look at our traffic, this is going up a very busy road and we're seeing some significant traffic volume fluctuations. I'm not overly concerned about that. The reason we're seeing this, we just don't really have that many roads. So a traffic concern on any given road is going to have a larger impact on the overall percentage. So just keep that in mind. The more roads you have, the, the less twitchy this is going to be. So that's why it's a little twitchy. So looking back at this, the number of total number of passengers is shot through the roof. But we still have those concerns with maybe potentially too much capacity now on routes like this first street route. So uh, that said, I'm, I'm reluctant to modify it any more than maybe dumping one passenger off. And I just I don't know that it's it's really worth it. OK, so we've got another route to take a look at. And that is right here, our other downtown route. So looking at this route right here, what we're seeing is that the buses are consistently full and we've got a couple of stops that are really, really full. Oh, uh, just killed everything I was about to say <laughs> because we've got 300 right here that want to get downtown. All right. Well, I guess this is this is we're going to have to do something more significant. 300. That is wild. 300. All right, I'm going to pause this again and we're going to come up with our number of passengers and then we'll th figure out how many buses to throw at it. So it's roughly 400. If I were to convert this to articulated buses, I think we could go with something with a little bit less capacity. So why don't we try a 50 capacity articulated bus? This should completely balance it out. Now, I, I, I don't know how else to state this. I don't know why you would ever use if you had in your in your in your garage and your fleet a 50 capacity bus and a 70 capacity bus they're going to probably take roughly the same amount of fuel but the capacity is less but you have the driver that costs the same no matter what so i don't know why you would have a 50 and a 70 uh, you know I, I think that you would just have a whole fleet of 50s or a whole feet of fleet of 70s uh but we're gonna we're gonna take some liberties here we're gonna throw the 50 at it we're gonna see how that goes i think after a few minutes, we will clear everything because there's about 400 passengers total that need to get picked up. So I'm going to let this go for a couple minutes and we'll see what happens. OK, and things have mostly normalized here. Now, there's some interesting things happening on this route. So what you'll see here is now we've got a lot of people queued up here, uh, almost close to that full bus capacity. Sometimes it will cross over and sometimes we do have a little bit of passing up, but it's not too bad. But the really interesting thing is here. This is our big dog stop right here at our inner city facility. This will jump up as high as 150 because people get dropped off here so quickly. Every bus that makes it out here, though, completely clears. So you know that you're going to take away 50 from this passenger number every single time that a bus passes. So it's not a huge deal that this is happening like right now. We're going to get up to 100, 130. <laughs> the number just it's wild, but you've clear 50 immediately because you're not coming out here unless you have a reason. Uh, so I would say that this is not you might not think that this is perfect, but I think this is perfectly fine. And that's this is what it comes down to. Take your vehicle, multiply the capacity of your vehicle by the number of vehicles 
and make sure that that is higher than the total number of passengers waiting at your stops and your routes are gonna function just fine. So uh, in the game, you'd probably wanna have the highest capacity buses that you could on the routes, on the, on the, on the particular routes because you think about it, there's less buses creating traffic, but I'm trying to do this somewhat realistic and I, I just don't think that you throw articulated buses on every route. <laughs> it's just not, not reasonable. One thing I'm really excited about is our total transit utilization is, is, is finally past the 1000 mark. And that's just, it's exciting. It feels like we're doing something big. So I'm going to take a look at one route one more time that I'm a little concerned about. And that is our town of Couillard Shores, just to make sure Yeah, this one's got some problems. So this is the one that we turned down our capacity. We have the mini buses running. And what you see here, we've got 100 capacity on the route in total. And I can see that for two stops, we, we have that. So I'm gonna add these up again come up with the total number of passengers, and then we're gonna adjust the number of vehicles that we're throwing at the route. Okay, there are 386 passengers queued at these stops. That was not what I was expecting. So, so just to put that into perspective, at 20 passengers a vehicle, we need 20 vehicles out there to make this work. So that is approximately 150%. That is really cutting it close. So I think that we would probably wanna boost a bit beyond that. So we'll throw 22 vehicles at it. And I'm gonna let this roll because I don't want to run any other vehicles besides minibuses. So I'm gonna let this run for a minute. We're gonna, just gonna see if this solves our overcrowding issues. Okay, and I've let this one run for a couple of minutes and I can already tell it's not going to clear uh, as I was hoping it would. Now, it's interesting. It, it seems as though the more buses I throw at this, the more demand it's inducing. In fact, if we look here at our bus facility itself, the very first stop, this is just the number of people here and at our second stop is just cranking through the roof. So there's a couple of things that I noticed that I want to check out. First of all, street crossings, that would make this kind of a challenging area. So we're just gonna take a look at our nodes and see if we can add some crossings that would potentially make this a little bit easier to get to the other side of the road so that not everyone has to be right here. And I think the rest of these are mostly okay, mainly because they're near intersections and that is where we have a natural crossing anyway. So I, I think that this is gonna help particularly these long blocks to get people to be able to cross the road and maybe not overload some of these stops. Now that's not gonna help me right now as we have some of these issues at some of these stations already, but hopefully down the line it will folks will decide to go on the bus that actually suits them, not just at the one that they're stuck on that side of the road of. So I am going to increase the capacity of this a little bit and I could go back through and add things up. It's mostly okay. Maybe I'm even pulling the trigger a little bit too soon, but I think we're gonna increase this to 25 buses. So a little bit more capacity. This is five more than I thought that we would need based on adding up the number of passengers that we were passing up. And this is clearly, as we're looking at our overall transit utilization, all of these micro tweaks are making a huge difference in our overall ridership. And just looking through this, I can see that we've got three stops now where we've got passing up about to only have two. And that makes me feel comfortable enough to say that I think we're in a good place here. So, so last but not least, I wanna take a look at this Harbor Shuttle one more time. And what we can see is again, We've got too much capacity here now. We could probably take this down to one vehicle and we're gonna absolutely take it down to two. <laughs> we don't, we won't overdo it. We'll just have these two vehicles and call it a day. So overall, I think that we are in a good spot with our transit. We could obviously increase the utilization of our transit network by going through our policies now to, to really encourage bus utilization. And I think at, with the city at this size, it might be a good thing. We're doing good financially and we'd love to get people out of their cars and onto the bus. So especially with our traffic flow being under 80, I know, like I just said, not that big of a deal. Our runway network is tiny, but we're gonna go for it anyway. And I wanna see what this does to our overall transit utilization. So we're taking a look here and we've got about 1,070. I'm gonna speed this up for about two minutes and see where this goes. 
Okay, and what we're seeing now is basically that there's a few more tourists and a few more residents on here. I wouldn't call it a dramatic increase in utilization, which is really interesting. But what has been in pretty impressive in my mind is that number one, our budget, it's been fine. It's gone down, I'd say on average, two to 3,000 per week. What's been more impressive to me is that I see the population number starting to jump. We've got a huge demand for residential uh, and we're gonna have to satiate, satiate that soon. But what I've been seeing is buildings leveling up. And I'm guessing that is reflected here as well. When we take a look at our land values and we're starting to see some more impressive land values in some of these areas. A little pocket of green, didn't have that before. And over here along the coast, more green. And look at this evergreen really starting to liven up. Things are looking good here, especially in this pedestrian district. <laughs> of course, of course. Ooh, and a burned down building. We're gonna have to fix some of these. There we go, good as new. And I just wanna highlight one more time while we're over here, uh, again, the shading issues. These were totally black in the front. And as I'm over here thinking about it, I'm gonna show you that now they're colorful all the way around. So relight was really the magic there and I will leave uh, hopefully this weekend I will get the settings up on the Steam Workshop in the collection so you know how to fix your build as well. So with that, I think that things are looking pretty good from a transit standpoint. Utilization good. We are well beyond our thousand mark. I'm feeling good about our routes. I want to go through one more time. I'm going to do this off camera real quick, but I'm going to see if we have any bunching. Okay, and basically the Couillard Shores line has a bit of bunching, but there's enough capacity that's clearing fairly quickly. And then that same downtown counterclockwise route that we've kind of struggled with, there's a bit of bunching. We could pump up the capacity, but it really we're throwing extra buses out there for no reason at that point. And then if we take a look at our traffic, we're at 79%. We're in a pretty good place. I think this is the perfect time to take inventory of what we've done and have a quick bus tour. All right, and that was a nice city tour. I thought it might be nice to take a look at our transfer facility at night, and you can see it is a well-lit, well-utilized facility that is really probably the pride of Couillard Shores, just a, really drawing people into this community, getting them to the fish market, getting tourists here. I mean, this is just, this is the dream to have this much activity 24-7. And now we've got one more thing to do and we have to head back over to Evergreen to take a look at that park. And Myrtle Brook has a new name. This is, comes from Chris91. They had a, an excellent backstory about the Chippewa tribe and what this area is actually used for. It's actually a, a, an ancient fishing ground for the Chippewa tribe and they recommend naming this Gigon Nature Reserve, which means fish in Chippewa. And I love that idea. I, I thank you so much for the story. I, I really thank you for the transparency. When you, when you say that you got something wrong and you, you edit it, that's that's awesome. Even saying how many people liked it uh, before you edit it, that's just super cool. So thank you so much. Let's get this renamed. And that is an excellent name. And I, I really like that you brought in the actual history of what this place is. So that, that that's one of the things. This is a real place. This is a real place with real people that this means something to, and it's great to bring them into this build. And with that, I think we're gonna leave that here. I hope that you've enjoyed this build. If you did, please hit the like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I really can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care. 
Bye-bye.